Good evening fellow nerds, this is the Boomer Nerd, known as George Tasker. I'm going to go into what should be now part 4 of a spreadsheet that has been analysing coronavirus data. The first video involve getting hold of the data, downloading it and looking at ways of converting data into especially the US dates into Australian date format so that LibreOffice could run with it. The second one, second uh, LibreOffice video dealt with turning converting date US dates into Australian date format using straight formulas without any intervening steps in the calculation. The third video has gone into graphing some of the individual nations and I think you would have noticed in part three some of the interesting coincidences that have been involved in countries for example such as South Korea, Iran and Italy. Well tonight we're going to take a look at infection rates. We've already set up some data. The first data points are, is the date. Second one is the total recoveries and the third one is the total deaths. So we've gone got to and added them up. You can look at part three for information on how we managed to achieve that. All right. So what we were wanting to do is look at the percentage of death rate. And we said that once you get sick, two things are going to happen. Either you're going to get well or you're going to die. So all we've done is taken deaths and recoveries, added them together and divided that number into deaths to give us a percentage figure. And so we're going to do that now. So we're going to take a quick look at the cell values where we've got the, the cell numbers. So E129 and E130. So let's get busy with that. So we're going to say equals we want deaths on top so that'll be E130 E130 divided by and now we're going to put it into brackets the following sum the reason being that if you use the bod mass form of mathematics <laughs> And divisions and multiplications get processed before subtractions and additions. We want to change that and we're going to use brackets to change the order. So it's going to be brackets divided by 1, 3, oh, hang on, yeah, E130 plus 3 coverage, which was E129. Okay, at this point in time we should be ready to pop the formula out and it gives us a number of 0 0.3778. <coughs> now that doesn't look like a percentage, but LibreOffice has a trick up its sleeve. We just go up to the top here and we can see that we can click on percentage and that's going to format that particular cell so it shows a percentage, 37.78%. Now we could do it manually. And the way we would do it manually is take this formula here and just simply multiply the result by 100. Let's give a demonstration of that. So we'll just back up one, leave it at that, and we will just go in and edit the formula. So there's the formula there. So we're just going to say times 
100. Now, if I press enter here, it'll show 37.7 blah, blah, blah. We're not going to worry about that. It doesn't look quite as nice. You'll notice it doesn't show the percentage mark and all that kind of stuff. So let's just get rid of that 100 and just simply click on the percentage format and it will show us what we want to see. Okay, so I'm going to format it as a percentage again. And there you go. It shows a nice little percentage mark at the end of it. Saves us having to try and add some kind of percentage mark in there ourselves. Okay, at this point we are now ready to do a copy and paste. So let's do that. Okay, there we are. Now, let's take a quick look here. So we start off with 37.78, then climbs up to 57, then it starts to drop. Okay, there it is. Now, this is going to be my first graph for this evening. So we've got to make it up. So I'm going to insert a row here. Going to grab hold of the date. Grab it. And we're going to drop it down here. Looks like I forgot to put the dollar sign in last night. Oh well, let's fix that up. So I'm going to back up one. Go in here, do a change. So let's do... Okay, so now we've got to change all of these to E dollar one. And it's so annoying. I wonder if I've got it elsewhere in one of my other spreadsheets. I'll just go and take a quick look first. Okay. No, not there. But it is here. So I'm going to grab this one here. Okay. Right, this is where I want to put it. Let's see if this works any better. Oh yeah. Saves me having to do stuff around doing a whole stack of that. So now we can see now it's E dollar one. E dollar one, E dollar one. Otherwise I would have had to type them in all myself. I'm trying to save myself a bit of time. Just call this percentage. Okay. Now's a good time to get to and see if we can do a graph. Oh, look at that. Okay. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a line graph again. Uh, the dates all look to be okay. Next. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Let's stick in the... Um, So we're going to start with this one. We can do a percentage recovery. In fact, I think we will in a moment, just for the heck of it. So we're going to put in here percentage coronavirus. Maybe we'll just call it COVID-19 just to make everybody happy. in 2020. I wonder why they put a 19 in there. Probably because it was last year when the disease first manifested itself. Now once again I'm going to put my source in. I've got to find it first. Okay. Here we go. This is so that everyone who bothers to look at these graphs can look and see for themselves the source of the information. And it marked it as a percentage, I'll just simply say deaths. There we go. 
All right, I'm going to make a comment about this graph in a moment. Just move it into position. Whoops. Okay, one more. Yeah, just right there. Okay. Hmm. Pop it over one. Blow up the screen so it's nice and big. Or should I say the graph? We'd rather a blown up graph. Okay, one of the things you'll notice is that this graph is showing what might be described as the Pareto Principle. Now, why it showed up like this is anyone's guess. Uh, it could have been that the infection first of all started hitting a whole stack of vulnerable people and so there was going to be a lot of deaths because they were the kind that would die when the virus hit them and the virus was later on going to hit a number of other people who were a bit more resilient with their immune system and what have you. Um, yeah, a few possibilities. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to jump out of this graph now just in case you're wondering what the Pareto principle is we'll go and check it out okay Now this talks about finance and uh, it's known as the 80-20 rule, the law of the vital few. Alright, I'll let you guys take a look at that if you want. I'm just looking for a graph. No, no they're not showing any graphs. Okay, I'll take a quick look and we'll just check out images. Nope. Well that's not nice. Okay. No, not happy with that. I'll just simply uh, go back and I'll just specifically type in a Pareto graph. Right, Wikipedia's got one here. We'll just see what that looks like. Oh, they look. Yeah. A little similar. Okay, line graph where individual values are representing descending order. Okay. Hmm. Oh, it looks like I'm a bit wrong. Um, because I could have sworn I'd seen. Pareto graphs that look very similar to what I've got here. But anyway, one of the encouraging things about this graph is noticing as time progresses, we are seeing a reduction in the numbers. By the way, I haven't refreshed the chart since yesterday. Yep. So we'll go back and, oh, no, not him. This one here. It says it's at 90,000. So let's just do a refresh on this. Because this one says it was the third of the third. Today is the fourth. We'll just see what they're trying to show us today. Okay, so South Korea has whacked itself up to 5,000. So that's really exploding. So we'll take a look at that in a moment. We'll, we'll see about updating the figures in the graph. And... Uh, 
see if we can get ourselves caught up with the latest and greatest in the data uh, all right let's uh, take another graph and this time actually I think I might um, uh, adjust this one and call it percentage deaths because we want to do one called percentage recovery I want to see what that looks like okay maybe I have a look down here there it is percentage deaths okay <sighs> all right what have we done here hmm okay I'm going to adjust this one going to put a dollar sign in front of the numbers to lock these numbers into place so that when I do my copy it's not going to stuff things up too much oh hang on let's get rid of that all I need to do is just copy these down and okay now this time we're going to change that to percentage recovery or recovered given that it's a historical thing death is always a historical thing regardless okay now I'm going to change the formula and instead of having 130 at the top we're going to have 129 at the top and that will give us the percentage recovery so let's uh, copy that out Damn. I need to need to go see how far out I gotta go AR all right gotta go out as far as AR there we go all right, so we'll paste all that in. And this time we're going to just get rid of all that real bullshit. Go away, that's better. Just make sure we've got all our data in place. Yep. Okay, time for another marvellous graph. Let's do it. Oh! Must remember to do that next time. Hmm. Ah, we'll fix that up in a moment. Okay, so we're going to change it to back to line again. We're going to join the lines. And notice it's pretty much an inverse of the other one. So it looks like, as time goes by, it looks as if it's getting better. Um, let's do a bit of labeling, eh? So I've got to go back and grab this 93,000. So we're up from 90,000 to 93,000. Of course, you can see that the China figure stays about the same. So all the increase is coming from every country outside of China. Damn, I was almost going to say Australia, but that just happens to be where I live. But. Uh, that's interesting. We're seeing some numbers growing here. We've got 11, 13, and 9. So the numbers are starting to grow in Australia as well. Oh, well, we'll take a look. In the meantime, I'll just finish off this bit here. Oh, I forgot the... I uh, went over here to have a... Grab the link. Okay. What are we going to call this one? Percentage recoveries. Okay. X axis is going to be the date. Y axis is going to be 
recoveries. Okay, so now we can pop that across a couple. Drag it down and make it nice and big again so it's much easier to look at. And there it is, percentage recoveries. Okay. Well, I'd say we've probably gone as far as we can with the data. If any of you have any questions that I haven't addressed in this four-part series, then I think that uh, now would be a good time to ask away. What I'm going to do for the rest of this video is I'm going to go back and I'm going to pull in the new data. So we're going to get the new updates. Now I've got to try and remember what was the last day of this data. So it was the March the 1st, if you take a look down the bottom here, yeah, 1st of March 2020, which means today's date is the 4th, so we can add three more days of data to the graphs, and then we can see what happens. to our numbers we're going to have to extend the range and all of that kind of stuff so we'll get to that so let's work on making some adjustments to these graphs which are already in place i don't i don't need to delete them all and all that kind of rubbish so let's get busy uh, we'll go back to this particular location okay i want to update everything so I just hit the update on my confirmed um, now does this tell us I'll just re-update it one more time okay it all looks good we'll just go in here so this is the confirmed figures so we're going to Go with the raw data. Um, can I see? No, it's not going to let me do it. What a pain. Okay. All we'll do is we'll just simply download it. And so we're going to put this in to confirm. I don't want that to be in books. Don't know how it got there. I want to go to Corona 2020. And we're going to clobber this data. So confirm is going to clobber confirmed. Yes, I want to replace it. So we go back up another couple. We're going to go down to death next. Get the raw data. We will save I'm doing it by pressing control s and that's going to be the death wants to know if I want to clobber it of course I do and we're going to get the same for recovered and we will after this have three extra days we can copy and paste Okay, so we're going to control S for save. Clobber the recovered. You'll notice that the dates here have changed now, which is fine by me. Okay. Back up one, back up two. Oops. Ah, time series. Now what? did that information say? Um, <clears throat> oh, I see. So, field description. Okay. Right. So it oper 
it updates once a day around about 23.59 which here in Australia with daylight saving would be around about 11 p.m. Just having a quick read of what is here. Okay, all right. Ah, all cases of COVID and repatriated use citizens from Diamond Princess are grouped together. Their location is currently designated ship's port location off the coast of Japan. They haven't had any further increases in deaths as far as I can tell. All right, let's go back and just find out exactly what's going on. So with confirmed, but we're going to now open up the confirmed one. That's going to bring us a separate spreadsheet. And I'll just simply, okay. Now what I want to do is go over here. There it is. We're now up to AT. So we've only had two days added, even though it's the third day. Well, let's just whack these two days in. I don't think I'll be coming back to the spreadsheet except for probably about a week's time when I will put some more data in. And if you guys have any questions, well, please, by all means, ask away. Now, I'm just going to go back and make sure that in the original spreadsheet we are actually up to... Okay, now we're looking for our South Korean stuff. I think that'll be this one here. Yep, South Korea on line 35. Okay, 3736. So we'll just check that. Yeah. Okay, all right. It looks like we've got the right figures, so we're going to put add these to Confirm. So what I've done is I've selected two columns. I've now gone Control C for copy. Now I'm going to pop back over to this spreadsheet and put this data into here. We will then look at the outcomes of what's going on in a moment. We're now going to go to the Deaths tab. And as you can see, we don't have any graphs in this one. Don't really need any at the moment. We might think, of, oh, yeah, actually, yeah, we could do uh, a, um, a graph here. Just showing the shape of the data with total deaths. And we'll do the shape of the data with total recoveries as well. Uh, let me have a bit of fun here. Okay. Now, I don't need recoveries anymore. And I don't want to mess up with their data. Because, who knows? I might want some more of it and it's nice to have the original okay so we're in death so I select the death spreadsheet here we are so we'll go out to the end so I'll click in AS and drag across to AT this time I'll just right click and copy I just don't feel like using the buttons this time And then I'm going to jump in to the Deaths tab on the original spreadsheet and add the data. So it's all in. Okay. And if we look down to the bottom, you can see why is it running all those numbers zeros down there? I better go and investigate this. What's going on? Why? What is down here that I didn't see the other day? Oh. We've got extra data in here. Let me just double check this. Okay. 152. 127. Aha. Guess what, peeps? We cannot can't use this data in the same way. Okay. Now, there's a way we, we've we just run into a new problem. A new problem. Okay. Let's go and see what how many 
we need 152 152 rows so we've got to push this data here down to 152 rows so we're going to select down to 152 right click insert rows above and that pushes my death down here the only trouble is still only sums up to 126 so we're going to have to fix that as well oh well, let's have a bit of fun fixing we're going to have to do the same here oh look at this so they have changed the data format quite significantly down here is 126 I think we said it has to be down to 152 all right so let's get busy down to 152 here it is I'll see what it does to the graphs so just watch carefully what happens here okay so it pushes all the data down but leaves the graphs in place how annoying that means I'm going to pull them down manually oh well. At least, if that's the only thing I have to do, I will not complain. Oh yeah, no, it's still good. Just making sure that by moving these, we haven't accidentally... Oh, that's Iran. We want this to go back up here. Okay, now that's all clear. Gonna have to do the same with this one. Make sure everything's clear there. You've got to do the same again with this one. Okay, now we've got room to put all the data in. Now, because we have had such a big change in the data. The easiest thing to do at this point in time is rather than trying to add single rows at once, is to try and add all of the data all in one hit. So that's what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to have to clobber this one and go back to the confirmed We'll bring confirm back up again. Here we go. Now I'm going to go down. Uh, uh, don't do that to me. I don't like you. Okay, that'll do. Copy. Tab back to here and I'm going to put it in A1. Yes, we're going to clobber everything. Clobber, clobber, dobber. Now, at this point in time, we're going to change this sum to be 152. That brings me down to row 152. As you can notice, it probably didn't change anything. Probably because there's so many zeros. But we're going to run across all the way. What's going on here? Okay, we're going to get rid of all of this rubbish. I don't know what happened there. I have no idea how those numbers got there. ASAT. 
Let's do that clobber one more time just to be sure. Okay. Yes, I want to overwrite the existing data and let's see what it looks like this time. Okay, looks a lot better. More to my liking. Let's go back to fixing. Okay, so I just want to take this value, uh, the formula in this cell and use it to clobber everything here. Yes, we want to clobber all of that. Now I don't think we really have to do too much here apart from add a couple more dates. Why are you doing this to me? Oh yeah. Okay, I'm happy with that now. So we've just widened out the columns. <clears throat> now the thing that's interesting is we're going to have to do the same thing with all of these. Oh, 35. Oh, it looks like we've got the correct data. AR35. Hang on, I want to go back up here. Oh, let's fix the range here first. No, go away. Data ranges is what I want. Okay. Oh, come on. Okay, let's give that another go. Hmm. D155 Let's take a look at this one oh, Data ranges Data series. Ah, oh, there we go. D one fifty five, D one fifty five, this name. Okay. We need to extend it.
So we're going to extend it to T. Not sure what. Oh, 154. So we'll have to extend that to T as well. Okay, let's go back and take another look. Notice how it's starting to show a distinct curve upwards. Now compare this to the curve that we're seeing back here. We can't seem to get, because you see, look at this, this is just saying mainland China. I'm not exactly sure how you could change that one. No, that's not going to show us anything. It says other locations. Oh, okay. All right. I reckon it's not going to be too long before we'll see other locations here. Oh, that says recovered. Okay. Hmm. All right. I'm going to check that because I'm a skeptical person and I'm going to take their numbers and just see exactly what they look like. We'll do that in a moment. Okay, so we're done there. We've extended the data range there. We will now do South Korea. Okay, we're going to go data ranges again. Um, okay, this time it's only showing us one thing that needs adjusting. So we'll do the adjusting on that. Just range for name. And... I have to do the same thing here. Just go back and take a look at the numbers that we got there. Hmm, didn't update. Why not? Let's take another look at it. Okay, I see what the trouble is. Let's um, move that out there. A couple more. So we're now AS and AT. We've got that. And then we're also going to copy this one. Oh, that's better. Let's see if that's made any change to our graph. Yes, it has. Okay. As you can see, it's still rocketing upwards per day. Oh yeah, I know what we can do too. We can also do an increase in number. That's going to be an interesting exercise. I'm not sure how long I've been recording for, so I'll just take a quick look. Hmm. Nothing here to tell me how long I've been going for. Oh no, 44 minutes. Okay. We'll probably go another 10 minutes. So what we'll do is we'll get this data up all up to date and then we'll work on the rest of it. So I'm just going to just speed things up here a little bit now that we're starting to... Okay, so that's that one done. Is there any more? Yep, another one here. Any others? No, that's about it. So, so that's global infections. We've already adjusted that. 
three, 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 three. This one is one, three, so we'll have to change the data in this. So we'll just fix up the data ranges here. T and T. What's happened there? Well, it's showing the three three there. So interesting is it didn't see too much change in the data, but then the shape is holding fairly true. So I dare say we're going to leave that one for now. Now Iran could be an interesting one, so let's fix that up. Now I want data ranges here. Okay. So we're going to change this. And we're going to change this one. And, oh, the increase seems to be accelerating here. So if we take a look now, we'll just compare these three graphs. Italy, not so much. Looks like Iran's rocketing upwards. One thing we could do is we could stack these series all together and we could see how they compare to each other. But if I look at these at the moment, South Korea seems to have gone a bit flat even though the slope on it is fairly steep. And we can see that the rate of increase for death, oh, sorry, confirmed cases, is on the increase. Okay. Now, we're going to go to death. We've just moved that one down. We'll just go and take a quick look out to the right. Okay, it looks like we're just good to clobber everything, so that's what I'm going to do. So, blow this one away. We will open up deaths now. Make sure we get everything right. So, tomorrow or whenever I look at this and try and import the data again, I'm just going to have to... All right, I've got it all. Copy. And we're going to just go Control Home, go into A1, and we're going to say yes. We're going to clobber what's here. Okay, so everything's fine. That is annoying. Why is that doing that? Let me go back and take another look at this. Maybe they oh it's got probably got something to do with formats or something. It's probably what it is. They're probably intending to do some more, add some more rows tomorrow or some other time. I'll wait another week and then we'll go through the work of trying to sort it all out. Okay, so we've now got total deaths at three one six zero. Um, I'm going to save this. All right, let's go and get recovered. Oh, going to have to blow this down to 250, aren't we? Hmm. Okay. All right. First of all, we're going to take it down to 152. I want to be able to insert rows above. Okay, so we'll just drag this down. Yeah, okay, that's relevant. Let's 
drag this one down again okay then we're going to clobber and paste and change the data ranges so we want recovered opened up okay things the lazy way here or the quicker way just run down here grab all of these that's better and you'll notice down here that the death rate is continuing to decline even though it's only a quarter of a percentage point at a time data okay let's go back and change the ranges okay you can change the R to a T see it's continuing to decline there and we should expect the inversely that it should continue to improve let's do that data ranges again okay so we're going to say AR going to AT same here And you notice that it's made an adjustment. All right, yep, okay. Now this is one of the things I'm a bit curious about, is how to work out the daily infection rate. The way we're going to do that, is we're going to go to confirmed, this will give us a different kind of information. Here we can see global confirmed. And I want to find out how many more get infected each day. Well, the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take today's number and subtract yesterday's number from it. If you take a quick look at this, 555, 653, it's around about 100. So I, I, if I subtract from here to here, it, I should expect to see 98 as my value. But I can't start with the first day. I have to start with the second day. So let's do that. Equals, E155. No. I'm just going to start again. Equals F one five five minus E one five five. Press enter. Yep, we get ninety eight. 
Now, I want to take this figure here and run down here and drop it. Now, oh, damn, I don't want it to be there. I want to put it there. That's better. Okay. Daily global increase. And then we're going to put the date in here again. Now, I'll, I'll put the full range of dates in because that way you can see that the first day can't be used because we're trying to look at an increase. It's a little bit how calculus works. Oops, didn't want that. Let's go back. One. Yes, go away. Okay. So now I'm going to, I've got data to work with from this point onwards. So up to 3, 3. Okay. Hmm, this is interesting. Let's see how this looks as a graph. <clears throat> we'll give this one a default value of zero because there's nothing to compare it with. We'll assume from before this day there was nothing. Um, okay, so... Okay, let's graph it. Interesting. Um, stick in a line, line to line. Is that what we really want? Yeah, probably. Okay. Okay, and we're going to go back and grab our link. We don't need you anymore. Why aren't you jumping to my... Ah, there we go. Right, right click on that. Copy. Put my source data in there. It's going to be date, and we'll just say confirmed. things up a little here we go nearly there okay so after China stopped providing fees, you can see how it dropped there for a bit, but now it's back on the increase. So it will be interesting to see what happens with these countries that show big numbers piling up again, whether they'll cut off the numbers like China did, or whether we will continue to see. Uh, if they do disappear, well then obviously someone's going to be trying to hide the truth. So I'll keep this graph available in the spreadsheet. 
Okay. Looks like I didn't adjust the RAN graph. I'll just make sure it's got all the data out to AT. Yes, it has, so I'm going to have to adjust the RAN graph. I thought I had. Doesn't look like it. In that case, we'll just see data ranges now. There's T. Ah, there it is. There's our problem. Okay. T. Still looks bad. The increase is speeding up. Okay. Any other questions we can ask? If not, we can bail out. I should be ready at some stage to start doing live streams. I put in an attempt to do one a couple of days ago and it said you have to wait 24 hours. So I thought stuff, I'll just simply record these and then we'll leave it at that. Okay, so we've gone up to an hour in time. Things haven't changed much since I looked at those the other day. We have added another graph that looks at the daily increase across the globe. If we like, if you like, we can drill down into some individual countries. Okay. It looks like the death rate is declining, so it remains to be seen exactly how severe it is. Um, not sure I can be bothered too much doing a recovery rate because that's what all these numbers here are. <coughs> so I think we'll just leave that be for now. <coughs> Sorry. Should hit the mute button next time. Do I have one? Ah, oh, pause button. That would probably work just as good. Okay. That'll do for tonight. Alright fellow nerds, I'm George Tasker your boomer nerd. <laughs>